Welcome to another episode of Technology for Independence with Christopher Cooley. Today he's going to be talking about service dogs, something that I always wanted to learn more about. So stay tuned. Welcome back to another episode of Technology for Independence with Christopher Cooley. Today, we're going to be looking at service dogs, something that I've always been curious about. Christopher, it is a pleasure talking with you. And yeah, good to be here and talking with you, too. You, you have a, a variety of different things that assist you. You know, we talked uh, last week about uh, low tech and high tech that assists. I would think that a surface dog is a high tech. Am I correct or am I wrong on that? Well, surface dog could be, um, it can be low tech to the medium tech. Um, you know, talking about low tech would be um, anything that assists you, anything that you can create to help you live independently, how to uh, be able to get out in your community, be part of your community. And I consider my service dog between the low tech, medium tech, um, my guide dog um, for the blind uh, from Pilot Dogs in Columbus, Ohio. I consider them as a uh, low tech and medium tech because, um, you know, folks may wonder why we think that a service dog is is a tech, uh, part of a technology. Well, service dogs have to go through a lot of training and in their life, you know, two years of their life. Service dogs have to go under um, a lot of training. Um, about a year to two years in the training, they go before in their training. And they also, um, you know, the trainers at the at Guiding Eyes for the Blind, Pilot Dogs um, for the Blind, um, and other program schools and other people that are training their dogs to become a service dog um, have to use a lot of technology like noise sounds, um, getting the dogs used to noises, getting them used to crowded people, getting them used to different things. So by the time they're ready to be uh, ready to be a service dog or a guide dog, um, I, you know, the program schools can call in the individual and say, hey, come on in and get your um, guide dog or service dog. Um, And they would be able to go in at that time and get it because um, that dog has been under a lot of training and ready to become a guide dog slash service dog. And um, I see a lot of, of service dogs in our community and a lot of people are afraid to go out into the community. Um, And, you know, as I lived in Columbus, Ohio, um, I I had an incident that happened 2014, 2015, um, Mother's Day weekend. My sister came up to get me, to bring me back to Portsmouth, Ohio. And on our way back, on our way back um, down High Street, in Columbus, um, we stopped at the gas station to get gas. And I went into this gas station and this gas station um, tented and the lady working with him um, kept, he, the guy started yelling at me, hey, no dog, no dog. And I said, it's a service dog, no dog, he kept repeating. And I kept saying, under the ADA, I can have my service dog in here. So I got back toward the coffee, where the coffee was, because I am a coffee drinker. And um, and so I got my, I was getting, getting ready to get the coffee, and the guy came around the counter. And he, he trapped me against the counter um, without get, able to get away. Um, and started yelling at me physically. I thought he was going to hit me. 
My sister saw him raging fists up at me in anger and telling me to get out, get out, get out now. And so my sister and other people in the parking lot heard it. Um, and so th my sister came in and caught him and was able to stop him and, and got me out of the store, out of that gas station safely. Um, and so they called the cops and the cops came and when the cops came along, um, he, he got my side of the story and then went in and got their side and came out and said, I don't know much about the law, but um, it would be it would be good if you just went somewhere else. And I felt really violated against that because he didn't know the law. And then um, I, ha I got forced out of there and forced to go somewhere else where I could have just got what I wanted there and been on my way back to Portsmouth um, to celebrate my mom. And, um, but it made me nervous, upset, um, angry, um, and really anxious. And I didn't know what to do. I got back down to Portsmouth, Ohio, <clears throat> and, um, and spent the weekend with my mom. But that whole weekend, I couldn't enjoy myself because of the incident that happened. It kept going over and over in my head. Um, and I couldn't get it out and I couldn't settle myself down. I didn't know how to um, do it. And so when I got back to Columbus, Ohio, um, I contacted an ADA lawyer and the ADA lawyer, um, you know, helped me file a complaint under the ADA, um, a violation um, against them. And um, so as the violation was going on, um, I sat down on my couch and I thought, how can I make this bad situation into a good situation? Um, and I thought to myself, well, what if I create a group on Facebook and, um, and call it guide dog slash service dog night out group. And this group, I, I, you know, really want to get out there and be more part of the community and um and ha have a good time with other dogs um so i so i went to chocolate cafe um in um columbus there in um grandview area and then also went to union cafe down on high street in columbus and i talked to them about having group my groups there um, and Lisa, Lisa at Chocolate Cafe, she's the owner, and she became the first big supporter for me and backed me up with everything that I needed to do. And I was so, I am so proud to have her on my side as a business owner. And um, because she gave me um, ways of introducing um, my, my group to other businesses and um was awesome and then also union cafe was great too because they were really accepting um and so when when i first i waited a while to see who would respond to my group outing and i start i got i got janet new city that's her name janet new city um and um she she is a puppy raiser from Guiding Eyes for the Blind. Um, they had a puppy raiser program in Cleveland, Ohio, and but she was in Columbus, Ohio, um, at the time, and um, she she was interested in coming to my group outing, and um, then I also got some puppy raisers from Four Paws that contacted me, and from Pilot Dogs that contacted me. Uh, for plausibility and pilot dogs. Um, and so I took that opportunity and I called um, one of the places that I mentioned. Um, and, and I asked them, I said, I have my, my guide dog um, and also have um, these program puppy raisers that want to come. Is that going to be a problem? Because they have the right to say no, because the dogs are not fully trained. Um, they're just puppies. Um, and, but by being under the program schools, um, they, they allowed us to come in and be part of their 
of their establishment. Um, and then probably the third week of our, um, the third month, I always had it once a month. The third month, um, I, I um, started getting other people that had um, legit service dogs and guide dogs coming, um, wanting to come. And so that, that right there was an awesome thing because I was able to um, bring in more um, legit service dogs and guide dogs um, to join our group and just get out there and have fun. That's all it was all about, enjoying our community. And um, service, um, and you know, I, as, as my group went on and we kept meeting in public places, doors kept opening you know, other business saw, saw us and heard about us. And they would contact me and say, hey, Chris, what about coming to our establishment? And, you know, we did that too. Um, and so I ended up um, seeing, um, as the group went on, I started seeing um, other places denying myself and others access um, to their establishment because of our service dogs. They didn't want that in there. And I kept seeing that happening. And I looked it up. I looked it up at court, the court system. And I looked up how many violations that were in the court at that time. And um, and I got to thinking, how can I change that and and keep it uh keep it an educational way? Um, make it an educational. Um, so I thought about what if I just go and talk to a uh, representative. Um, and I I thought about the idea and I went back and I asked, um, I talked to um, Janet New City uh, from Guiding Eyes for the Blind. And I also talked, at that time I worked for Easter Seals in Hilliard, Ohio. And um, the CEO of Hilliard, Ohio, she, me and her and Janet um, sit down, um, her name the lady at the um, Easter Seal, um, her name is Pandora Shaw. And um, we we sat down together and, and came up with an idea about how we can approach the representatives. And so me and I went back home and I started calling representatives' offices, got their door, got a door open, Representative Michael Ciciano, he's not there now, but he was the representative that at that time. Um, and um, I sat down with him and I said, I said, you know, we're having all these access issues that should not be happening. A lot of people denying um, us with multiple disabilities and service dogs. It, it bothers me. How can we fix it? And he looked up at me and Janet and he said, what about creating a bill that is designated um, for awareness um, week, uh, awareness week? And so we talked a little more about it. Talked about you know coming up with Ohio Service Dog Awareness Week um, for the last week of July, and um, that the last week of July we created the bill, um, and I had to go out and knock on doors. Janet helped me, and also Lisa at the Chocolate Cafe. Um, she, they all, the, both, and Pandora at uh, Easter Seals, they all three helped me um, and guided me. And um, Lisa was there to encourage me and push me on. Um, and Janet and Pandora helped me knock on doors. And we got a, we had to get a rep a representative that was Republican. I I started knocking on the doors and, and talking to senators and talking to uh, representatives, Republicans, because we already had a Democrat on board. We just needed one more Republican. Anyway, Michael Cintiano and the other lady, um, she helped me. They, they both helped me um, get this bill created. And so we took it to the senators, the senators looked at it and said it was a great idea, uh, bringing awareness about service animals, service dogs. Uh, 
And um, so we took it to the house um, and the house um, heard, heard our, my, my story, heard um, Janet's story and Pandora, um, you know, how they see dog service dogs and people with disabilities being treated. And so the house, um, they, they did the Ohio house, they um, looked it over and, um, and it really passed really quickly. It passed really quickly. Um, and because they really wanted to see this happen and they see, I was happy that they did see that need. And so um, when it passed, um, I thought, well, what if we just do a service dog awareness walk? Um, and so I talked to Janet and, and Pandora again, and um, we came up with an idea of having um, a service dog walk around the state house, going around the state house, going up High Street, where there's a lot of businesses and a lot of people that will see us out there. So we created a walk, and um, from there we went on um, every year having a walk, and it started growing and growing and growing. And um, a lot of um, a lot of times, um, you know, there's still um, a, there, there's still a lot of denial. A lot of people being denied um, today, um, but. With the group, um, with our service dog awareness walk, our goal was to bring awareness. Hopefully, people will uh, um, see it and learn from it. And um, our, as the walk went on, I saw a lot of um, businesses um, still being, um, you know, saying, you know, denying other people with service dogs. And I see that um, a lot of people. Um, with disabilities being denied um, or not not accessible um, for them. And um, I started reaching out to them and trying to educate them and, and bringing awareness to them. Um, and um, in some places that we uh, requested, they would call me up or email me and say, Chris, I know that we're, we're um, probably three or four hours away from you, but can we pay, can we pay for you to come and, and educate our staff or help us be accessible for other people with multiple disabilities or service animals? And I said, yeah, I would come. And so they would pay for me just to come and help them. And, you know, um, that, that's what it's all about, is awareness. They saw our awareness walk. And they wanted to learn more and, and do more. And as, as we went to the, um, we went to out our outings into the restaurant, we went to cafes, we went to bars and grills and different places. Um, as we were there, um, so many people in the, in the community that was coming in had a lot of questions about service animals and people with disabilities. And we were able to educate them um, as they came in. And, um, and that was a great thing because that was something that I wanted to see happen. And, you know, a lot of times you hear your, um, a lot of the hotels and a lot of places are saying, oh, well, you, you can bring your service dog, but you have to show ID and, and, um, and paperwork. Well, under the ADA law, the two questions that they can ask is, is, is that a service dog trained under the ADA? Um, and also the second question, what task does it perform? And they're not asking about your disabilities. They're not asking about anything else. They're just asking how the dog helps you. Um, and... Um, a lot of places want to keep saying, you got to have paperwork. We, can, we won't allow you in here if you don't have paperwork or, or an ID. Um, under the ADA, says that they're not allowed to ask for any of that. They're not allowed to ask for that. Anywhere in, 
in the United States. Um, they're not allowed to ask for paperwork or ID. Those are the only two questions um, that they're allowed to ask. And and the two questions should be, uh, everybody should be asking those two questions because those two questions um, are important because, because it allows, um, it allows the establishment of that business knowing that is a legit service dog. And a lot of people want to um, get get a vest offline, get one of these vests offline, get a certificate online that my dog is a service dog or my cat's a service animal, my fish is a service animal. I've seen it all. Um, they, they will use anything to get that certification thing as a service animal. Well, those cert certificates that you see online that says, oh, you get to take your pet anywhere you want to go, ju just certify it and you'll be able to take it. And that is not true because number one, it's a scam. Those, those um, certificates online is a scam. They're taking your money and giving you a piece of paper that is not, it's not legit. Uh, because if you read the ADA law, the ADA law says that you do not have to have a certificate. Um, you do not have to have paperwork um, to to have a legit service dog. Or um, now, now um, ADA um, says that miniature pony could be a service animal. Um, so that now there's miniature ponies and service dogs. And so the, the miniature pony falls under a fine line under the ADA, but they still can't be denied. Um, and so um, I, I see a lot of people buying the certificates offline, and I say those are a fake because if you do read the law, you'll find out. Um, and also, I... Um, I see a lot of people um, taking their emotional support dogs, pet dogs, um, or pet cats, or whatever it may be, and carrying them inside of a door and hiding them. I see them hiding their little dogs, um, trying to not 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 be seen because they want to take their pet anywhere they want to go. But stores, restaurants, hotels. Um, most of them have a no pet policy. And that no pet policy means you're not allowed to have your pet in there. You're not allowed. If you look at Walmart, you'll look at these other stores and places. They have a sign that says no pet. Um, only serv trained service um, dogs or service animals. Um, and that means they have to follow the, um, the health the health law, um, health department law, because there's food. They serve food, they serve drinks, they serve that kind of stuff. So they have to follow under the health department law. And a lot of these places that serve the food and drink uh, and places, uh, most hotels, um, they're not allowed to have emotional support and, um, and pets inside their establishment under the ADA and under the health department rules. Um, only service dogs are allowed inside any establishment that is served by the public and also allow to um, be able to go in and enjoy their stuff. The only place that they're not allowed to go and we have to ask permission is, um, is a private club well, you have to pay membership. If you have to pay membership, those are the kind of clubs that may not allow us to have our service dogs with us. And um, so with that to be said, um, there is an app to, um, if, if you have questions or doubts about service animals, or if you need to know the law, this app is a great app and it will, it will help save time and you can learn by it. And I think every first responder should have this on their phone too, um, cops, police, or whoever it may be. And the app is called 
N A G D U. N A G D U. Um, it's a free app, and it will help you understand the law a little bit better. You had mentioned that some service uh, animals include ponies. Um, I would imagine that if you try to take a pony on an airline, um, you might not be allowed to do that. What, what's your thoughts on that? Well, there hasn't been a case that they have allowed it happen, and I and I'm only th- and to my knowledge, I only saw one um, that was able to, because miniature ponies are just the same size as a big dog. Oh, and, okay. All right. And so, so to my knowledge, we um, only have um, just one that did that I know of. Well, I, I found this uh, very interesting. Um, how many service dogs have you had, Chris? Um, want to say about six to seven. They all retired um, to illnesses or maybe um, um, may have passed away. But that's probably how many from pilot dogs. I, I would imagine you really get attached to each and every one because they're around you so much and they're doing your work. They are my eyes and ears. Um, and they are with me 24-7. Yes, it, it really gets heartbreaking when that happens. I understand. We're, we're talking with uh, Chris Cooley. He's a tech ambassador with the state of Ohio, and he also uh, comes regularly on our program talking about uh, different disabilities. I really appreciate, Chris, uh, learning more about the service dogs. Thank you. You're welcome. If anybody has questions, feel free to reach out. 